watching the online and we are back again and our next speaker is Jordan Zambaza. If you want to know everything from our uh, team leader speaker and well-known uh, expert, so here he is. Hello everybody, it's uh, Jordan Zambaza speaking. I hope you hear you, uh, you hear me well. Everything is okay with the connection. Yes, everything is great. Hello Jordan, I'm really uh, glad to see you. So let's start. Absolutely. Nice to meet you. And uh, today I am going to speak about uh, use cases of applying uh, blockchain in education and uh, um, about uh, why believe we believe education is uh, definitely a sector that uh, needs to be um, improved by applications of blockchain. What are the overall problems that we see with uh, education uh, sector at the moment? I'm going to touch a bit more details about uh, uh, what are the problems uh, in terms of recruitment, uh, uh, in terms of uh, collaboration between academia, uh, businesses, learners, about uh, the open source university project and uh, the way we apply blockchain and smart contracts uh, in the way we're resolving problems uh, there. So. Um, what we are doing at Open Source University is uh, a credentials passport. So we're be building the passport where people can have their self-managed sovereign identity in terms of uh, their mission, in terms of their accomplishments in regards to the diplomas that they have about the certificates uh, that they achieved during their, uh, during their lifetime and uh, how we tokenize uh, this uh, marketplace. So uh, uh, could you please uh, move to the next slide? Uh, actually, OK. Uh, so uh, our vision is uh, that things are going to change quite a bit in the in the next um, years, maybe maybe in two years, maybe in three, maybe in later. But uh, I would like to start my presentation with uh, uh, a quick uh, quote from uh, from a, a very intelligent person who is saying that the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. And apparently, these skills are very important when living in this dynamic era of blockchain technologies, of of uh, programming of software of engineering that is changing so rapidly and um, we need to adjust we need to find some other way to operate in the 21st century because the current educational system it is definitely proven to not been working personally i decided to quit uh, my studies of higher education uh, in the fourth years of my study because uh, because um, I, I do not believe that a person should spend four or five years in uh, in university uh, just for the sake of uh, issuing a diploma. That's part of the problem because those diplomas, they do not mean too much. People do not care too much about diploma. And part of the reason is that people fake diplomas, people um, make uh, any sort of uh, false claims. And uh, that's exactly one of the reasons uh, we are working in the open source university project. But in addition to that, in the whole dynamicness of the situation, it is important to have customized, customized degree path, to have a good connection with the businesses and to be sure that what you are actually learning is in, in a demand. And uh, that's, um, that's apparently very important. Um, could you please change to the next slide? Thank you. So that's only part of the problem that uh, we're solving. The current uh, existing model, it is uh, very strained. The content is so rapidly dispersed and there are more than 7,000 different mocks out there. Uh, starting with the biggest ones like Coursera, Open Learning, uh, edX, and uh, a bunch of others, uh, 7,000. And that's only the MOOCs, the online platforms that are providing online content. Apart from that, there are so many educational content 
uh, sources, different sorts of academia, uh, small educational institutions, uh, and uh, people people are lifelong learners. Uh, they they uh, acquire knowledge from all these different sources, and this content is dispersed. There are no good means to organize that knowledge and to be sure that uh, this knowledge is uh, held by the individual in a credential wallet that is under their management so that they could directly interact based on that certifications, diplomas with uh, interested parties, with uh, their potential employees, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, people who would like to verify their knowledge. In addition to that, there is a huge gap between um, business and what educational institutions are actually providing. And part of that reason is that there is no platform out there uh, which can um, pretty much close the feedback loop so that those people could know what they are producing. How we're going to solve that? We're going to solve that with uh, organization of uh, this content. Um, first of all, starting with the certification so that uh, people could have their uh, achievements, diplomas, certificates stored in a credential wallet, which is under their management. In addition to that, we're going to list all the partners who are under, um, under this platform who provide educational content, blockchain certification. And uh, we're going to solve this by gamifying and uh, by uh, tokenizing, to tokenizing this market, which is, uh, which is uh, huge. Uh, that is uh, our vision. Currently, we are uh, we are uh, developing our MVP, which uh, which is uh, on GitHub, and um, the, we're st uh, we're starting with uh, with uh, our alpha release, and the the core of our release is going to be exactly this credentialing wallet, which is uh, on the on the blockchain. Part of the technological stack that we develop on GitHub, uh, we Built on top of the Ethereum blockchain, using uh, using some of uh, some of uh, the most well-known and uh, proven technologies in in this uh, highly disruptive market, like Truffle, IPFS, Web3, Solidity. Uh, on the on the front-end aspect, we develop uh, using Python, React, Redux, Django, and uh, on top of this platform, which is going to be distributed, once again, you can find our alpha on GitHub. Uh, we uh, we built the core of the credentialing wallet where people will be able to collaborate with academia, businesses. Businesses will be able to directly collaborate with uh, learners and uh, academia. So uh, that's uh, part of uh, our technological st stack. And um, and uh, it's a well-proven technology. We're developing this with uh, with a team of uh, very talented software developers. Uh, could you please uh, move to the next slide? Great. Uh, I would like to mention about uh, some of the integration benefits for uh, different uh, participants on the platform, starting with academia. Uh, there are more than 7,000 MOOC platforms like Coursera, Udemy, all those listed on the on the left part of the slides. And uh, what are the benefits of those people to get uh, to to adopt the blockchain technology? Uh, well, first of all, they have uh, this exposure of their educational content to a huge pool and pool of talents. Uh, we consider that. Every person out there is a potential lifelong learner, and uh, it is very important uh, to to provide uh, all those people with the ability to to study on that platform. It is very important to guarantee that uh, that uh, all the skills that are going to be acquired through the specific course, through the specific degree, are going to be valued and uh, adopted by the business. So. Uh, in addition, uh, in addition to that, it is uh, very important uh, to provide all these uh, traceability aspects uh, to to people and uh, be able to assure them that uh, the 
certificates they acquire, that uh, the skills that they gain will be traceable and it will be very traceable which institution did uh, grant uh, those skills. That's uh, maybe the biggest uh, benefit for the academia. Uh, next slide, please. For the businesses, here uh, again, it is uh, it is about uh, verification of the skills because uh, our product is self-managed ad educational identity. And uh, when dealing with uh, businesses, um, especially with partners who are into the recruiting business, uh, we were discussing that more than 30% 30% of the people who are applying for a job, at one point or another, they were providing some false data about their actual skills, about their qualification. Personally, I have uh, heard from some people that I know that, for example, uh, a software developer applies for a position which is for a Scala developer. He never ever did know anything about Scala or about functional programming. And uh, his claims are that, uh, Okay, I do not know that, but because the company is uh, paying well, uh, I'm going to learn this uh, pretty quickly. And uh, this doesn't happen. The solution, solutions which are out there at the moment are very heavily centralized um, platforms that uh, people can claim pretty much anything, but there are no means um, to, to verify the knowledge of the people who are applying. In addition to that, um, based on, again on discussion with our partners, uh, that's a very interesting point, by the way. Some uh, the latest partner we are adopting, he mentioned that uh, companies usually know more about people who are applying at the moment for a specific job, and uh, people who are already for five years, for ten years within the company, uh, they simply trust them, and there is no reliable mean to track their professional development, their personal improvements, the way they are advancing in the corporate structure within the company. And uh, again, using a similar verification techniques through the credentialing wallet that Open Source University is building, uh, this is going to be a huge benefit for the businesses, which is pretty much closing the verification feedback loop. So uh, I think these are very, 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 very big benefits. And uh, what is uh, the state of uh, our current uh, uh, platform? I think uh, this is uh, even maybe a bit outdated slide, but uh, we do have uh, our MVP developed on uh, GitHub. The alpha is out there, a stable release uh, to be announced very soon. And uh, through the platform, people uh, will be able to find the content of our partners who are adopted into the platform, enroll into the educational uh, process so that they could store their um, certificates, collaborate with the businesses, and uh, manage their educational identity. Uh, the platform, it, is, um, it, is, uh, it consists of uh, smart contracts, of um, UI, obviously, so that people could manage their uh, identity completely in a completely uh, distributed way. The market potential is uh, huge. Um, the projection, the projection of the educational content market, is uh, to reach 240 billion uh, US dollars by 2020 and uh, and uh, this is a, a huge potential. And uh, again, in this, these slides, uh, which uh, I can uh, I can share later on the on the Facebook event, um, you can find some interesting other metrics about uh, uh, the opportunities to collaborate between business and academia, business and learners, and uh, and uh, so on. So again, the market potential is huge because there are so many. Uh, lifelong learners out there. Here I would like uh, to demonstrate uh, on this slide some of the other blockchain disruptors. We are more open to call these uh, people partners, potential partners. 
at the moment there is uh, no other uh, solution that is uh, provi providing this end-to-end -end experience when it comes to collaboration between learners, academia and business uh, apart from open source university. There are some uh, very well-known um, blockchain-based projects like, like uh, Skew Chain and uh, BitDegree. And uh, those people we definitely recognize uh, as potential partners. Uh, but those people are mostly, and the indoors, of course, those people are mostly into the course production business, into uh, educational co content marketplace or any of the other aspects which are uh, which are covered by, by open source university but the only solution that provides end-to-end -end experience in regard to uh, giving awards to uh, giving this credential wallet where people can manage their identity uh, in terms of providing the means to um, get better employed to find a better job to provide your correct learning path so far this is uh, open source university and uh, our research dates back uh, to 2015 when uh, christian daskalov started uh, his research as part of his doctoral thesis um, could you please move to the next slide Great. So uh, here on this slide, uh, I am um, highlighting some of uh, the key uh, pilot integrators in all these uh, in all these uh, verticals. So the first one is, uh, of course, the educational marketplace, educational content marketplace. Uh, we are tightly collaborating with University of Insurance and Finance in Sofia and um, and uh, those are uh, the people who can uh, help us uh, uh, adopt and verify uh, do the pilot integration so that we could move on with additional with additional uh, MOOCs and additional partners uh, currently we are also in touch with uh, with one of the top 10 online MOOCs uh, I cannot that announce uh, that yet uh, we are also in touch with Technical University of Sofia with uh, Mandalay International University, with uh, Brain Workshop University, um, with uh, a bunch of uh, other student organizations so that we cover the uh, students' vertical and learners. There are a few businesses that are already adopting our platform and we are in touch with them in order to find uh, the best way to, uh, to collaborate and uh, to solve their problems. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, here on this uh, diagram, which can also be found on the website, you can see the current uh, status, status of the project development. Uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, previously, the first and most important aspect is uh, the release of the alpha version of the platform, which you can expect very soon. After that, we have some very key partnerships in mind uh, so that we do the pilot integration of the project and uh, continue uh, take our lessons from those pilot integrations and uh, continue with additional iteration so that we could uh, provide faster means of integrating those products so that we uh, find uh, the best way to, to scale it. Next uh, slide, please. The team, uh, the team consists of uh, some people who are experts in their area, uh, starting with uh, Christian Daskalov, who is uh, nominated as the doctoral candidate of the year for the year 2017, uh, and uh, he did uh, he did receive that uh, reward by Ministry of Education last year. Me, uh, nice to meet you, Jordan Jambazov. Uh, I am into software development for the last 10 years and uh, I am leading, leading the technological aspects of, uh, of development of the open source university platform. Momchu Jambazov with whom I am a partner in, uh, in uh, open source university project and in IO era. And uh, he's also my brother, uh, very well recognized in the user experience uh, fields and usability fields 
in the community of Eastern Europe. Dobromir Kovacev, Kovacev uh, uh, software developer with more than 10 years of experience. He was uh, directly developing software for one of the biggest uh, nuclear power stations uh, in Bulgaria, actually currently the only one, Kuzuldui nuclear power station. And, uh, and uh, quite a few other people who are helping us uh, advance, advance further. Uh, please move to the new, next slide and I will explain more about advisors. Gordon Kerr, who is, um, who is part of, uh, who is part of uh, Cobden Partners, uh, one of the best known financial companies in London. They were helping us a lot and they still do in regard to tokenomics about how to make use of uh, the EDU tokens, which we we're selling during the crowd sale. It, it's uh, already running. Ali Madhavji, a uh, very well connected uh, person with uh, interest in education and blockchain technologies. Detalina Smilkova, uh, the, the director of uh, Insurance and Finance Institute in Sofia. Jan Scarf, very well known advisor, uh, advising uh, more than 50 more than 50 blockchain based projects and uh, people with a lot a person with a lot of experience in the in the crypto sphere professor kevin doubt uh, who is one of the first people to start the research in the areas of free monetary systems uh, Kalinsek of um, i'm not going to continue with all of them but uh, definitely check them out on the website and uh, you will see that we have quite some all-star team members and uh, advisors, people who definitely continue uh, helping the project. And uh, only this way, open source university can provide the large scale, that uh, the large scale and uh, uh, disruption of the market, which is uh, huge and is worth tri trillions of dollars. Uh, next slide, please. The funding model and uh, the token generation. Uh, as I mentioned, as I mentioned, currently we are in the ICO phase, and uh, we do recognize uh, the, that uh, ICO is a very good way uh, for a few things. The first one is, of course, to spread the word about the project. This is um, one of the most hyped areas of blockchain technologies. People are investing into crypto. And uh, it's a great opportunity to find project supporters, to find uh, people uh, with whom we can work with in the future. And in addition to that, in addition to that, uh, fund uh, the the project further. So uh, we are issuing uh, 48 million EDU tokens, which will be used for gamification of the learning process of uh, of uh, issuing certificates. And our platform is going to operate with uh, them. Next slide, please. Why do we need uh, a token? So there are a few reasons for that. Uh, so uh, the first one is, uh, of course, uh, of course, uh, the gamification of uh, the learning experience, of the hiring experience. In addition to that, the EDU tokens are going to be used to power the open source university distributed application. And uh, it is going to be a secure a circulating asset alternative to fiat that will provide 0% platform fees. And uh, we, we're also going to accept other crypto payments on the platform, other crypto currencies. In that case, what we're going to do is to charge a small commission. That commission will be used to burn to buy off part of the tokens that uh, th that we have on the exchange buy those tokens off and burn them so with uh, 5%, five percent five point two point five percent will go to the open source university project for further uh, for further project sustainability and 2.5 percent of the commission that we charge when dealing with other cryptocurrencies uh, that will be burned and uh, that EDU token, in addition to that, it will allow us to have a further scaling of the platform in terms of adoption of other blockchains. 
So uh, we do have a technology that is called BDN, Blockchain Delivery Network. And uh, these this are going to be uh, blockchain uh, nodes written by us, which, uh, which provide consensus with other blockchain solutions out there, like NEO, like Eternity, or any of the other protocols out there. Uh, next slide, please. What is our uh, token distribution model? Uh, you can find uh, this information on the website. Um, the token uh, distribution, we already had our pre-sale round completed successfully. Uh, currently, we are in the public token sale, and uh, you can find more information about that if you visit os.university. Uh, you can find uh, more information about uh, how much tokens were already distributed, about what is the allocation, how much goes to the team. Uh, the team tokens are vested till January 1st, 2019, by the way. We do have also part of the bounty program. Feel free to join it. There is still some time left. We do encourage people to write articles about the project, to spread the world worth using uh, videos, using engaging content, using, uh, using articles, all this stuff. So you can be part out of this uh, great credential walleting project. Feel free to join. Uh, next slide, please. please. Uh, here is our uh, business model and uh, the tokenomics. Uh, in order to guarantee better adoption of the system, we are definitely uh, adapting fiat payments. Most of the educational institutions out there, unfortunately, are not absolutely ready to adopt crypto into, into their um, economic system. That's why we have a separate circle of circulation for fiat money. Uh, those fiat money, again, using the same principle, we take commission when using fiat. We use that commission to buy off some of the EDU tokens and burn them. And uh, the other circle of circulation is, uh, again, um, again uh, the crypto one. We integrate custom smart contracts to the academia, to the MOOCs adopted on the platform, to the businesses uh, that are willing to, uh, to adopt the platform for hiring purposes, for uh, verification purposes of the people who apply on the platform, and uh, for internal purposes as well. If those people use EDU tokens, uh, they use the platform with 0% commission. If they uh, decide, not, decide not to use uh, EDU tokens, then we charge a 5% commission, and part of that commission, we use it to burn the token. Next slide, please. Here are uh, part of the milestones uh, that we have already um, um, reached. So we did uh, have our pre-sale round, which was happening in two stages. During the, that phase, we were very, very actively developing the alpha version of the platform, which is on GitHub. Currently, we are in the main token sale period, uh, which, is, uh, which is finishing uh, on July 1st. So make sure to join uh, the token sale and uh, be part of uh, this uh, disruption of the educational content um, industry of bringing the people knowledge of their certificates, of their diplomas, of their achievements onto their self-managed educational uh, sovereign identity, which is 100% under their management. Next token, please. Uh, next uh, slide, please. So how it works, um, the crowdfunding uh, aspect is um, very easy. So you get on the website os.university, you make a transaction to our CrowdSell smart contract, which automatically brings you back EDU tokens, and uh, those tokens are locked until you pass the KYC procedure. So the KYC procedure, it is also quite easy. Uh, you uh, make a selfie in front of the camera, like I'm currently standing with your uh, ID card. You also provide us with a photo of uh, the front of your ID card with the back of the ID card. We accept passport, we accept uh, uh, 
uh, driving license. That's fairly easy. You can find all these instructions on the website. So let's not bother too much with that and uh, move to the next slide. So uh, on the website, you can uh, find uh, some other very interesting information. Uh, the first one, which we are starting with, is the one pager. Uh, one pager because uh, people in general don't like to read a lot. And uh, on one page, we have done our best job to put all the most important aspects of the platform, how people collaborate with the businesses, with the academia, how academia finds uh, those people. On one page, you can find a white paper. Uh, we were also nominated um, um, by, uh, by the blog. And uh, actually, tomorrow, I am traveling to Amsterdam for uh, an event which is called Blockchain Europe where we are going to uh, present on this event and uh, uh, tell people more, more and more people about uh, what we are building and uh, why we believe it is, uh, it is going to disrupt the uh, educational uh, business in general. We were also nominated as one of the most innovative startups uh, at tech startups that bring education to the next level by observer. Um, and uh, you can find uh, a big list of recognitions on our website. So let's move to the next slide. Here are the contact uh, details. Make sure to ping us on hello at Toas University. Anybody who is uh, watching uh, this webcast at the moment and who believes uh, that we can be of partnership uh, together, that we can uh, together disrupt this uh, huge market worth uh, billions of dollars. Make sure to contact us um, to hello at us University. Check out our website and uh, join the Telegram discussion. Find us on Facebook. Uh, I don't have a last slide for question and answers, but I'll be very glad uh, to hear that from you. So thank you. Thank you, Jordan. It was really useful and interesting for me and for our audience, I'm sure. And we have a lot of questions. So here's some of these questions. And uh, first question from our website. What influence will have global educational database for our future? Well, uh, it's, uh, it's not so much about uh, the global educational database because currently there are quite some uh, educational courses aggregators. So there are already platforms that provide uh, so much courses online. Uh, there are other platforms which pretty much unite all the content from these uh, different sources. It is more about uh, the trust issue. How do you guarantee that uh, the person who claims to have skills in that area or a person who claims to have, let's say, a certificate from one of these MOOCs or uh, anybody who claims to have pretty much uh, um, a diploma or anything, how do you prove that in the biz with the business? And uh, how you close that feedback loop? Um, how do you bring the career development path so that uh, you know this profession is indeed in demand and uh, that uh, the content which is provided by the learning platform is uh, aligned with the needs of the business, that uh, businesses are indeed looking to hire those people. But uh, in any case, I think uh, here the biggest challenge is uh, not so much about uh, about uh, how you combine this content and make it, make it accessible to the people. That's uh, only part of the problem because currently the content is so much dispersed. It's not organized uh, too well here. Our primary aim is actually to build this credential wallet so that people could uh, control their career path, their achievements, be able to store their achievements on the blockchain. Okay, thank you, Jordan. And another question from Chris Oliver, and he asked you, what can go wrong in future with blockchain that somehow it would be used anymore? Uh, what can uh, go wrong with uh, blockchain? Uh, I think uh, I think um, the, the, the that in terms of technology, like if we speak about uh, 
something uh, something uh, like uh, having a technological issue where the blockchain cannot continue operating anymore it's uh, it's um, pretty much uh, impossible blockchain it has already proven its benefits and even if it is not uh, the perp uh, the perfect technology at the moment distributed ledger technologies in general already uh, proven uh, have proven their benefit uh, benefits and people are already using um, those technologies in order to have better tra traceability of things that are happening to have faster and cheaper value transfer and uh, maybe from purely regulative uh, aspect uh, this uh, can be regulated but again i don't think uh, um, any regulation would be a step uh, in the wrong direction it's just the opposite we need regulation in this whole area in order to get better ad adoption of the technology and uh, what can go wrong I think uh, there is probably a huge link uh, list of things that can go wrong but uh, everybody should definitely give this technology a chance because uh, it is uh, it is uh, something like the next industrial revolution and if we uh, don't give this technology a chance this means uh, that uh, that we're choosing a future that is not going to be bright uh, it's something like uh, trying not to give a chance to the electricity or to the steam engine or to the typing machine or to the computer so i think uh, it's not stoppable at the moment and uh, um, we should definitely continue towards building uh, less friction in order to adopt this technology and uh, we're definitely doing this at open source university by communicating with regulators by communicating with universities yes, yesterday i was at a discussion at sofia business school and i was explaining uh, people from uh, new bulgarian university about the benefits of adopting this technology and the process is slow, but our people are definitely starting to understand it. Okay, thanks a lot, Jordan. So let's imagine that blockchain technologies are make success. So what our world will look like in future if blockchain are successfully will be used in every area of government or society or open money politics? What do you think about that? I think uh, the world in general will be a place where people feel safer, where they don't have uh, those uh, trust issues because they can easily verify what people are claiming. It will be a, a world of faster value transfer. It will be a world of a huge uh, generosity where people can uh, give away uh, value to the people without, uh, without uh, going through the man in the middle uh, one of the big problems at the moment is uh, that even if you would like to donate money to some very uh, very honest organization uh, like for some very good cause like education or healthcare uh, you need to donate those money to um, to some organization and then you don't have the traceability about how those resources are spent with the blockchain technology people are going to be able to transfer value in a peer-to-peer -peer way and have the direct traceability about how uh, this value is uh, spent. So I definitely, I'm a very big blockchain optimist. That's why I am uh, working, I'm very glad to be working in this area. And I think uh, that the world, it will be a safer, a better and, uh, and uh, a place where people are going to have more equal chances. Thanks a lot, Jordan. Thank you for your time and uh, for your performance. It was really exciting and interesting for our audience. A lot of students are writing me down that it's a great opportunity that if blockchain technologies were success, they'll have open world for their ideas and their chances. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.